Put on your mercy and do it forever. For you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation rejoice. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. For who you are. Thank you, Lord God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, intercessors. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to get started. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you for this day, life, health, and strength, Lord Father. We thank you for keeping us and guiding us. Thank you, Lord Father, God, for being merciful, gracious, Lord God, loving, patient, and kind with us, Lord Father. Thank you for being intentional, Lord God. Lord Father, we come humbly, Lord Father, to you, giving you honor and praise, Lord Father. We exalt you, Lord Father, for you are great and mighty. You are above the heavens, Lord Father. Lord God, you sit high and you look low. You made the firmaments, Lord Father God. You created us. You knew us even before we were designed and made out of our mother's womb. You knew us, Lord Father God. And Lord, on today... We thank you for giving us the gift of life and the present of today. We thank you, Lord Father, for just moving, Lord God, in the atmosphere. We thank you, Lord Father, for all that you have intended and planned, Lord God, for us on today. Thank you for your will. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for you are intentional. You are an awesome God. And Lord Father, bless the intercessors, Lord Father, that will be coming on the line. Lord God, you touch their hearts, Lord God. Lord Father, those that will be listening to the message in the recording. Lord God, anoint the message and the recording, the equipment, the electronics, Lord God, that they will hear you. And not me, Lord Father. As I die to myself, you arise, Lord God, in me. My lips are your lips, Lord Father God. In the name of Jesus, my mind is your mind. My eyes are your eyes, Lord Father. Use me as you will, Lord God. I am a willing vessel, Lord Father. I surrender to you. And Lord Father God, allow the word to be nourishment, Lord Father, for our mind, body, heart, and soul, and spirit. Lord God, that we may be wise, Lord God, to implement, Lord Father God, your will and your instructions. Lord God, continue, Lord God, to encourage us, Lord Father, to seek you, Lord God, the knowledge of you, Lord Father. Grant us understanding. Understanding in you, Lord Father. Open our eyes, Lord Father, and our mind to the greatest of discernment, Lord Father. Your discernment. Lord, allow us, Lord Father, to be at peace, Lord God, with the things around us. Allow us, Lord Father, to remember who we are in you. Lord Father, help us, Lord God, to remember, Lord Father, who you are to us. Allow us to love on each other. Allow us to be diligent, persistent, consistent, Lord Father. Allow us, Lord Father, the energy, Lord God, the endurance, Lord Father. Help us to endure each trial and tribulation, each test, Lord God, each stretching, stretching and pressing, Lord God. For we know it is for our good. And that all things work for our good. 
And Father, we honor you. We bless your name. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen and amen. Praise God. Good morning and thank you, Lord, for joining us today. We open the door as you knock so you can come in and sup. Amen. And we're going to start off in Jeremiah. Praise God today. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Praise God. Because we're talking about the promise. We're talking about God's promise, the promises of God. And sometimes we have to remember the promises when things seem to be just a little weary, when things get to be a little rough, when we don't think we're going to quite make it, when we need a little extra push, when we need someone to, to encourage us, out the promises of God will encourage you. So we're going to be turning to Jeremiah 29. And verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts, and in some verses, some Bibles, it says, I know the plan that I have for you. But in this, the, the King James Version says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Now the Lord said, I know the thoughts I have. He knows his thoughts. Sometimes we are unaware of the things that we be thinking because we just they come so quick, and sometimes they don't always be good. But the Lord said He knows the thoughts, so He has understanding of His thoughts, all of them. Amen. I know the thoughts I have toward you. We know the Lord can think something, and things just happen. He said, "Thoughts of peace," and we know that peace. In peace, nothing bad can never really formulate in peace, right? He said, my thoughts of peace. And we know that in peace there's love, in peace there's kindness, in peace there's meekness, in peace there's humbleness, in peace there is joy, in peace there is happiness, in peace there is love, in peace there is patience and tolerance. Or we say temperance. So God's thought of peace is your complete balance. Because in peace, there's liberty. And in peace, there's wealth. In peace, peace encompasses a lot. That one simple word is a great, great benefit. Peace brings on good health. He said, but I I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So now, if it is a expected, the the word expected to be anticipated, desired. And if he's saying, my thoughts to you is peace, so guess what you're expecting in is? All good. This is a promise. This is what he's saying. And then in verse 12, it says, Then shall ye call upon me, And ye shall go and pray. I said, hold on, uh -oh. let's go back. It 
it says, then ye, then shall ye call upon me. And, that's a conjunction, it's an addition too. Ye shall go and pray unto me. So maybe we, we you know, like, Lord Jesus, we start praying, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Father, we thank you. But he said, call on me. To call upon me. The same way it is when you go to your parents or, or a friend or something, you call and say, hey, how you doing? Hey, Sister Marlies, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Call on God. He said, and then go pray. So in other words, get God's attention. Let him know, hey, I'm getting ready to pray, God. I'm getting ready to intercede, Father. Hey, it's me. I'm getting ready to stand in the gap. Even though he knows what you're getting ready to do because he knows your thoughts. But he said, call on me. And then go pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. There's a step one and a step two. And then the Lord will hearken. Now we know there's a verse that says, call upon me and I will answer. I said, mm, calling upon the Lord is a little bit different than praying. That's your announcement. That's your RSVP. That's your courtesy call. Amen. Hey, I'm just checking. I'm on my way. Hey, Lord, I'm just, just letting you know I'm getting ready to pray. Hey, I'm getting ready to go in, Lord. And I thought it was so powerful because a lot of times we just go straight to pray. But then there's a before we pray, we call upon the Lord. He said, call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. That's a promise. I will. He didn't say, I'll think about it. He didn't say, maybe. He said, I will hearken unto you. Amen. For those that are just joining us, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 and 12. Praise God. Amen. So we know that God's thoughts for us are of peace. And we know that peace encompasses everything that is good. Everything that is just and right. We know that <coughs> now that we know that peace is great. He says, I think toward you the thoughts of peace. And some people think that peace, you know, it's just thinking about that. We say peace, what that means nobody at me, nobody disturbing me, nobody bothering me. Or nobody asking me a question, nobody calling, just peace, just chill. My day, my way. Just easy. Watching TV, I'm in peace of the day. Just chilling, clicking the boob tube. But do you understand that peace encompasses everything that we are looking for? He said, my thoughts of peace, God's thoughts of peace encompass everything. Health, wealth, happiness, joy, love, all of it. Peace, balance, all that we, we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have balance in our life. Peace. He said, my, my thoughts of you are peace. Not just being quiet and nobody bothering, no, but peace. In other words, being able to move through the day with ease, being able to pray with, 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 with the anointing. Peace. 
having patience with people, being tolerant of things, being humble, meek. Peace also having the wisdom. Peace obtaining the knowledge. Peace getting the understanding. Peace having the discernment. Peace having the love. Peace giving out kindness and being able to bestow kindness. Peace. Having charity. Peace. Putting our hands to the plow and being happy about it. Peace. Not being weary and well-doing. Peace. All these things. This is a promise. And peace is powerful. Because peace encompasses God's love. So let us turn to Isaiah, amen. We're going over to Isaiah 40. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We have to understand that God says his thoughts of peace are toward us. That in itself is more than enough because it encompasses all that we need. But he gives us a lot of other promises. God's promises are plentiful. Amen. So in verse, uh, in chapter 40 of Isaiah 29 and 31, it says, He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth in strength. So who's thinking today? God said he'll give you power. Who's feeling weak today? Who's feeling like you're not strong today? Like you can't hold on? He said he'll increase your strength. That's a promise. He said, even the youth shall faint. We see that now. Our youth don't have any type of hope. They're weak. They have no strength. We have our adults do the same. Everybody fighting with guns because they have no strength in their bodies to fight with their fists to live another day. Amen. He said they faint and be weary. They upset about everything. Worried about everything. It shows in the actions. He says, and the youth and the young men shall utterly fall. Now, what are we seeing today? Our young men. Most of them are falling to the hands of the government. Imprisonment. Not all, but most. They have no patience. They're feeling jilted, misunderstood. They're frustrated. And they haven't even lived a full life yet. They haven't even gone through really no hardship. But they're weary. They're weak. They're faint. But in verse 31 it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait. In other words, trust. Wait means to continue to work in the vineyard. Wait means to listen. Wait means to still commune with God. Wait means to listen. Wait means to trust. Wait means to know and believe. And in that waiting, you end up with a
testimony. God is my redeemer. God is my healer. He's my strong tower. Amen. He said, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Do you understand the wings of an eagle and how they're strategically made? They're designed stealth. They, they are made to endure the wind, the turbulence in the air. They soar. And every now and then you see them sway to the side, but they don't, them wings will stay straight and sturdy. Even though a simple feather can be plucked. The wings of an eagle can soar for miles. The wings of an eagle can flap a few times and get him to distances of great mileage. I mean, he, he can flap ten times and, and go hundreds of miles just on soaring by itself. He says, they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. In other words, when the battle comes, we can endure the hits and, no, and not, not be weary. I don't know if I did that. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, sometimes we're going to be in that race and that battle. And yeah, we may get fatigued a little bit, but God will restore. I was telling someone yesterday, I said, the last two weeks have been a true battle for me. I said, I'm just feeling fatigued. I'm not tired. I'm just fatigued. You know how it is. You don't be tired, but your muscles just get a little, whoo, they get tight. They just, whoo, you have to start. Like, whoo, got to catch my breath. Just feel fatigued. Not really tired in spirit, but just fatigued in body. And sometimes you can get fatigued in the spirit. Let me tell you, because if you get hit enough in the spirit while you're fighting and battling, like you do in a boxing ring, the body gets fatigued. You wonder, how do they get up again? They just they sit down for two or three minutes and bing, 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 and the bell goes up and they get up again and go at it. Because they're not tired, they're fatigued. And you see them slow down. Because some hits ain't no joke. They say you can run that race and not be weary. In other words, that means you won't give up hope. That means you won't give up the faith. That means you'll stay in the race. That means your belief won't waver. That means that your faith is strong. That your hope in Jesus is great. And that no matter what, you're not bowing out. You won't get weary. You won't turn to be an optimist. You won't be optimistic in, in things that you should already know are going to happen. You're not supposed to be a skeptic all of a sudden. Well, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think that's going to, I don't know. How are you going to believe the word and, and not believe the whole word? The complete word of God. It says they shall walk and not faint. In other words, do you know you can do more miles with walking than you can with running? So now you walking. In other words, you got a good pace. You making it. You got a good steady run. You speaking the word. You you 
you see people and you're giving them a good word and so you're saying hello to people that you, you that people may not even speak to. That's your walk. Go to go to the job and praise God, you're getting up, got the car. But hey Susie, hey John, you know, hey, hey, good morning. Hey, yeah, good, all right. Good to see you. You just got your little walk going on. He said, but you won't faint when folks look at you funny. You won't faint when they start to talk about you. You won't faint when they get to be the sandpaper people that we talk about a lot of times that rub us the wrong way, but understanding that it's making us smooth earth for our perfection because God is perfecting us, amen. But that's the promise. He said, you won't faint. You won't get weary. Praise God. You'll be able to soar above all the adversities. You'll go through it. When the storm comes, you can rise above it. You'll still see it. You have to go through it because in order to rise above it, you have to go through it. Amen. But he allows you to get to that peak to where, like the eagle does, he'll ride out a storm. And he can soar without even flapping his wings for miles. He'll keep you stable. He'll keep you up there. He'll keep you elevated. While the storm is going on, he'll give you that peace, hallelujah, that has complete balance. Praise God. Even when you're fatigued, he'll give you the peace. He'll allow you to be able to spread the wings and just soar. Don't have to flap. You ain't got to fight it. God got it. I done did all the battle. The battling on my end. God, you handle it. Praise God. Hallelujah. But even an eagle has to fly upward. When he flies upward, he's going through the storm. He still has to endure the thunder and the roar, the lightning, the wind, the rain, or whatever else is coming out of the clouds. Sometimes the clouds be at battle. They just... Boom, when they hit each other, that's thunder. Boom, he going through. But when he makes the clearing, he's able to soar. We do the work to get elevated. We do the work to rise above it. We have to flap the wings. In other words, we have to put our hands to the plow. We have to do the grind. We have to do the prayer. We have to do the intercession. We have to do the fasting because God promises that we are sore like eagles. Hallelujah. In other words, we rise above it. He gave us that promise. He said, you run. Have you seen a gazelle? Just run. They run miles. Just because I want to run. I'm running. I'm on my mission. I'm going to make it over there to the water, and I got to go 20 miles. They can run them 20 miles and not be weary. Get to the water and enjoy where they're at. Because they know where the water is. They may not be able to see it, but they know where the water is. You may not be able to see, hallelujah, the results. You may not see the full vision yet, but you know you're headed toward a vision. You know that there was something God gave you to do. You head toward it. You may not be able to see it manifest right now, but you move toward it. Keep running on it. Don't, 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 don't say, oh, I'm tired. He said, you run and you won't be weary. He said, mm, 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 mm. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hmm. You know that son or that daughter is going to come out of that situation. You know they're going to straighten out. Don't get weary in the prayer. Don't get weary mm, showing the love. Even though it don't look like they're coming out. Don't look like they're going to get it right. Don't look like they don't understand. God's got a plan for their lives. A plan of peace. You have to speak it. Call it out. Know the promises of God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Call it out. 
thank you. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That little song is there to walk it out. Now walk it out. Now walk it out. Praise God. I don't understand what they're saying. Don't motivate me. You understand? <laughs> you motivate me now. Because we hear it as just a little song. But I start hearing the promises of God. I start hearing the endurance. He's telling us to have the endurance. Because all we have to do is call on him and then go into prayer. Hmm. He'll hear you. He will answer you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know about y'all. I don't think I done got myself happy. I'm preaching myself happy. Y'all don't have to <laughs> talk myself happy, Jesus. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. I think I'm the one being encouraged. I don't know about y'all. Amen. But I do know for so, this this message here is truly resonating. And, <laughs> and I'm still talking about the promises. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yesterday we talked about it, and this is the other second day of it. We have to know the promises of God. We have to understand what his promises are to us because otherwise we will falter. We will not be able to stand a whole truth. We will not be consistent. We will not be diligent if we don't know the promises of what he said he would do for us, how he would give it to us, and how we're supposed to come to him. He says, if you do this, I will do that. That's a covenant. It's a promise. God don't lie. Hallelujah. He's a man that cannot lie. He's a God that cannot lie. In the name of Jesus, we have to know that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. I got plenty more scriptures, and Lord, I ain't getting through none of them. Hallelujah, Jesus. What I'm getting to, good God Almighty. Praise God. Matthew 11, verse 28, praise God. And it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest into your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise God. Did y'all hear the key to that? He said, come unto me all ye that heavy laden, hallelujah, that laboring are heavy laden. How many are laboring? And you're feeling heavy laden. How many are doing the work of the Lord and feeling a little fatigued? How many of you, holy glory to God. Mm. He said, come unto me. He didn't say, come to Sister Marley's. He didn't say, go over there to Sister Patsy May and whomever. He said, come unto me. Because the only person who give you rest is him. He said, come unto me. All that labor. And are heavy laden. Because you know sometimes in laboring in the vineyard, we can pick up a lot of weight. Them bundles are heavy. Them bundles of concern. Them bundles of issues. Those bundles of teaching. The bundles of praying. The bundles of interceding. Those bundles. of giving but still being in need. The labor, those that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How many are studying to learn who he is? How many are true? Are we just looking for the good promises? But do we know who he is? Are we studying about his actions, his moves, how he is, his diligence, his mm, 
his persistence? Are we learning about him? Praise God. Are we learning about him and his love and how he loved people? Because we're supposed to be a reflection of Christ, you know. So are we learning about him? That we can practice what he does. That we can look like him. Have power like him. Have love like him. Have joy like him. Be at peace like him. Oh, Jesus. He said, I give you rest. Take your yoke upon me. And learn of me, for I am meek and lonely. I am meek and lowly in heart. In other words, I'm good. I'm easy going. I'm healthy for you. <laughs> Good God Almighty. <laughs> and he ain't going to stress you to learn him. Just come on. I'm here I am. Just chill. You know, I'm good. Just learn about me. Here I am. I ain't going to stress you to learn. But here I am. I'm an open book. Here I am. Learn of me, and I guess what? The other mysteries about me, I, I'll disclose to you. Have a relationship with me. You know I love you. Love on me. Come on. Search me up. Cuddle up to me. Hug on me. Talk to me. Commune with me. He said, ye shall find rest in your soul. How many folks you know that are tormented in their soul? They look good on the outside but jacked up on the inside because they don't have peace in their life. They're vexed. Everything bothers them. Everything is an issue. They got a complex on this. They got an issue on this. And they got a, they got a oh no on that. And nothing is ever right. He said, but you'll find a rest for your soul. You take on the Lord's yoke. You take on the work of the Lord. And you learn of him. Because his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. In other words, his instruction is easy. And what he have you to do, the work that he wants you to do, is light. Why? Because he gives you rest when you're weary. He gives you joy when you're sad. When you're lonely, he'll talk to you, speak to you if you call on him. He'll answer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have to be reminded of the promises. We have to understand the promises. Know the promises. And there's plenty more where that came from, praise God. So today I encourage you, if you're weak, you're weary, you're doubtful, you don't think things are going to work out, you're struggling, you're contemplating, you're speculating, you just need to be able to chill for a minute. Hallelujah. You need a breather. <laughs> Go find Christ. Go find God. Get the word and take your breather. Get your peace. Be strengthened. Become whole. Get your peace. I encourage you today. Don't give a working for God because your situation looks a little bleak, or you, you're frustrated and you're tired, or you're dismayed, because you don't need to be, because God got you, Christ got you, is in the word, use the word, try the spirit by the spirit, call it out to him, Lord you see it. 
So therefore, I'm trusting. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the word. Thank you, Jesus, for the encouragement. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for your promises, God. And Lord Father, we bless your name, God. We thank you, Lord Father, for being omnipotent and great and mighty, intentional with all plan and purpose for our lives in your hand and in your thoughts, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for thinking of us and desiring good for us. Thank you, Lord Father, for your thoughts are great and mighty. And Lord Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the word, Lord Father, is applied to our lives, that we, Lord Father, can use wisdom to apply it to our daily lives and our, for practical application, Lord Father. Lord God, hallelujah, for peculiar situations, God, in the name of Jesus, for unfavorable situations, God. Help us to apply your promises. Bring back to memory, Lord Father, God, what you have designated and designed for us to know. And Lord Father, we honor you. We give you the glory and the praise. Amen. Are there any comments, questions? Hallelujah. Praise God. Was anyone blessed? This is our time to share. <laughs>